Hello. This is a video about the post-processing that I did on these images. They were captured beside the Seven Estuary and the sun was quite low. It, there wasn't actually a sunset as such. I didn't see the sun go down behind the horizon. Uh, it was a rather murky day and by this point the light was getting quite low. Now the camera that I used to capture these was a small sensor camera, the Panasonic TZ60 and there are a couple of, at least two, disadvantages of very small sensors. One of them is that they're not terribly good for scenes with very high contrast. And while the sun was there coming through the clouds low down, it was pretty high contrast. Another thing that small sensors are not so good for is low light and the light was quite low here. I was using what, a fifteenth of a second for this one, an eighth of a second for this one. You'll notice that they're all ISO at 100. You might think well why didn't he raise the ISO? Yeah maybe he could have done. Um, things get worse quite fast with small sensors if you raise the ISO and I, I tend not to. Um, in this particular case, looking now at the uh, exposure times, I think maybe I would have done better to raise it a little. But there we are, that was a mistake and you deal with what you've got. Now I use three products for post-processing most of the time and I might use one two or all three of them. They are DxO Photo Lab, as it's called now, Silky Pix, and Lightroom. I normally use DxO first to do noise reduction and some other things and then pass images on to uh, either Silky Pix or Lightroom, and if they go to Silky Pix, they'll then be passed on to Lightroom in turn. I did start out like that with these, but I didn't really like what DxO was doing to them, and so I used Silky Pix to start off. And by the way, these are with RAW files. I was shooting RAW. So Silky Pix got the RAW files, and then they went to Lightroom. What I did in Silky Pix was quite straightforward. Um, I just loaded them into Silky Pix, which applied some default sharpening and some default noise reduction, and I didn't alter that. I only changed one thing. This slider here, which is generally called HDR, starts out with no effect and what I did was to change this we can see there's a very um, a very bright area there there are six options here dodge burn and both uh, burning is bringing down highlights dodging is bringing up shadows and dodge and burn is doing both at once HDR is a stronger version of both of those. What I used for these was to set this to Color Burn HDR, which is a strong bring the highlights down effect. And I moved the slider right up to the top. Now, the reason I use, or one of the reasons I use Silky Pix is that I think it's particularly good at this sort of operation. 
It also gives you some other options for dealing with highlights, but I didn't use them in this particular case. They actually made matters worse, not better. And that leads us to one of the things about my post-processing technique. It's very much a matter of experimenting, trying things. Sometimes some things work, sometimes they don't. I was quite surprised when I tried there's this thing called the highlight controller uh, and I usually pull these sliders right down um, but this had a rather nasty effect here I don't know if you will see it on the video but there's a pinkish sort and rather bright boundary here around the bright area um, and it was actually better to leave that alone so for me, post-processing is, I mean, it's partly experience, um, but with every image, there's an element of experimentation, watching what happens, and then um, changing things if they don't seem to be working out right. And we'll see that when we look through what I did in Lightroom. If we now go to Lightroom, I'm going to run through what I did to three of the images. But before I do that, I want to show you the sort of things that I'll be doing. Because of the way that the history is stored in Lightroom, I won't be able to touch any sliders when I'm showing you, uh, running you through the history, because that will destroy the history uh, from that point on. Um, and I need the complete history to go through the whole thing. So I'm going to show you um, the sort of things that I'm, I'll be doing um, in the steps that we'll look at. One of them is, if we go here to where it says basic, mm, go away. Um, there's a load of sliders here about um, white balance, so I can warm it up, cool it down, um, change for color casts, and change the exposure up and down, contrast, um, highlight shadows, whites and blacks. The blacks are the very darkest areas, and the shadows are the areas that are dark, but not the very darkest areas. So, for example, when I pull the blacks right down, this bottom area does go completely black. When I pull the shadows right down, you can still see things in there. Similarly with whites, which are the very bright areas, and highlights, which are the bright but not the very brightest areas. Then there's clarity, which um, makes it clearer. <laughs> uh, vibrance, which is like saturation. Um, but um, I'm not quite sure what the difference is between saturation and vibrance. It's generally reckoned, I think, better to use vibrance in Lightroom than saturation. The other things that you'll see me doing are here under this detail area, which is sharpening where I can have more or less of it. I won't be, uh, probably won't be altering um, these two sliders. Uh, and then there's one called masking and what this does is that uh, as I pull this up uh, you, it, you can adjust what parts of the image get sharpened so here oh, it's all going to be sharpened here almost none of it is going to be sharpened and so you can choose um, the effect of this is to uh, means that the areas that are dark won't be sharpened and that means you're not trying to sharpen smooth areas which is good in a case like this especially uh, which um, where the smooth areas are, are often quite noisy and what you don't want to do is to be applying sharpening to um, to those sorts of areas otherwise they'll make them look even worse the other thing here is uh, noise reduction that i can turn the um, luminance um, noise reduction up and down um, and uh, also the chroma the color noise reduction as we've seen though um, silky picks will have already applied uh, some um, sharpening and some noise reduction and by default um, I can't remember exactly whether um, 
whether Lightroom applies any in those circumstances or not. Um, so if we now go and look at the images that I've got the history for, and there are these three, this one, this one, and this one. Oh, sorry, there are some other things I wanted to show you first. If I go back to, oh, we're in the right place here. Um, so we looked at the sliders that I'd be using the detail sliders and the basic sliders. Another thing you'll see is that I'll use this thing called the adjustment brush and what's happening here is that I can paint a particular area and if you can see it's it's not a very bright red um, and what you'll see that I've done is, for example, to paint on here and I've got it set up so that the um, auto mask is on, which means it'll be looking for boundaries uh, and so I'll be doing, will have done some painting on this particular area here, amongst others. Then, once you've got one of these areas, um, marked out, you can then apply various things like temperature tint, exposure, highlight shadows, um, sharpening, noise reduction and so on. This is not the full set of everything that's available in those two sections of details and basics, um, but it's, um, it's quite a few of them. And the red thing is just showing us the area concerned uh, and you can turn that on and off so if you turn it off, you can actually see the effect um, that it's having. So, for example, if I was to turn the exposure up just in that area that I've um, uh, masked, um, then we can see, and there it is, I've turned it right down. So that's the sort of, um, another of the things that you'll see I'm doing, or have done. You won't actually see me do it. The third one is to do with um, joining images together and normally I associate this with high contrast scenes that you might want to um, take one that's underexposed, one that's normally exposed or um, one that's exposed for the highlights and then add them together um, and so you can get something both from the shadows and the highlights in difficult situations like this. I tried that. I, a lot of the time when I was shooting these I was using uh, exposure bracketing. The TZ60 only allows you one stop in either direction I believe. Um, but it turned out that when I tried it on these images it didn't turn out too well and in fact I did better um, with a single image. Again, rather surprisingly, and like <laughs> post-processing can be full of surprises, I think, um, this is one of the ones that I use um, exposure bracketing uh, and actually made uh, what's termed uh, a high dynamic range image out of. Now, this isn't particularly high dynamic range, but let's just have a look and see what happens. So I... If I merge these, and incidentally in this case I did merge the original raw files, not the um, files that had come through from SilkyPix because, and I don't understand why this is, Lightroom wouldn't merge the ones, it said not enough photos, similar photos or something like that, and it just wouldn't do it. Whereas when I fed it with the original raw files, like I've just done here, it would do it. As to why that would be, I have no idea. You can get Lightroom to um, adjust the highlights and shadows and things like that, do this auto-toning, um, but I turned that off. Uh, it had aligned the images, although it hasn't got a terrific amount to work on in terms of aligning them here. Um, and it hasn't done anything on deghosting, which is um, taking account of anything that's moved while the photos were taken. So I'll merge those together.
and what you then end up with after a few seconds is another version of the image and this is a merged one it's actually a DNG file now if we have a look this one is rather similar to the middle of the three that were captured however have a look up here at this whitish area and I'm just going to go to the HDR version and it's got more detail up here and what's more the there's a little bit of color in there um, which isn't in this one so I've actually got more to work with with this one than I have with the single image again that was a bit of a surprise to me but you try things and you see what works so now let's look at the three that I've got the history for that we'll look through. And it's these three. And we need to see the history, don't we? Okay. So in it came, and this is the um, as the TIFF file came in from SilkyPix. And what you'll see, you may have to run some of this twice um, to see what's happening over here. But I pulled the shadows down. So I've got to go back to the beginning. I made that bottom bit darker. I then pulled the highlights down and put them back again to where they were. I did some cropping and I then moved the whites up. I made it the brighter, brightest areas a bit brighter. I then turned the exposure down a little bit and what we're seeing here is the results of me experimenting as I go along. I turned the blacks right up and the shadows right down. Put the shadows back, put the blacks back, took the shadows down a little, put them back again. Pulled the blacks down, put them back. Pulled them down to a different amount, put them back again. And pulled, now raised the shadows up a long way. Must have got a bit tired with things at that point. Um, a brush stroke. What did I do here? Let's look at the brush. Oh yes, I remember. Uh, what I did was to brush across this darker bottom area here and increase the saturation. I then added some more brushing across here and brushed further across and what I was doing there was increasing the saturation and a bit more up here as well. I then cropped again and cropped a bit differently and a bit differently and a bit differently and a bit differently. Just trying out to see what I like the look of. I then applied some sharpening. Now we're now back off the brush. This is overall sharpening. There it is. I applied because I think that started off as a default value of 25. And we see here that by default it hasn't applied noise reduction. I think that's because it's a DNG file rather than the uh, rather than the raw file. I'm not sure about that. It might not even do it with raw files. I can't remember. Um, so going on here, uh, the sharpening was 34. I turned the sharpening down a bit. And then I added some masking. So let's have a look at that. That was the masking that I applied. So none of the sky is really getting any sharpening, which is what we want. I then sent it off as a JPEG. Came back later, having thought about it or looked at it and decided I didn't quite like it. I may have looked through all of them at this point and decided, oh, they all look a bit cold. I can't remember it. Or it might have been this individual image that I decided um, looked wrong. So I then changed the temperature, which is back in the basics, and I've, I've 
Ooh, I've actually made it colder, which is a bit of a surprise. Uh, and I sent it out again. I then did something else with the brush. What was, oh, um, not sure. I think it might be, oh, I remember. Oh, no, I don't know. Um, I think it's probably that one. And that's turned the exposure down in that area. And now, I don't know which one that relates to. Um, and in one of these areas, I'm now changing the exposure. Again, I don't know which of those that was. Oh, there it is. So it's this bottom area. I'm now pulling the exposure down to make it darker. And now I'm changing something else. Oh, I think I've turned... Oh, I've added something over here, I think. And turned the saturation up. Uh, the highlights... Uh, in one of these areas, I don't know which one, uh, highlights, there we are, it's this bottom, I've turned the highlights right down, and the contrast, somewhere I've changed the contrast, I don't know where I did that, Oh, there we are. I've turned the contrast right up. Which one's that? That's in this bottom area as well. Okay. And now, oh yes, I've added another brush area. This one here. This this area looked just a bit too um, dark for me. So what I did was to, I think, yeah, lightened it up just very, uh, or about half stop, a little, just to make it Give it a tiny little bit of, of um, it'll stop it being completely flat. Then I, oh, I don't know where that one applies to, uh, the same place by the look of it. I did, um, I pulled the shadows up. Is that what I did before? Yeah. Oh, right. Okay. Um, so I think I've adjusted, oh, I took the exposure back down and um, left the shadows raised. Well, there we are. Uh, and then I sent it out as a JPEG. So that's the first one. As you can see, I was bumbling around, um, changing this and that, um, experimenting to see what I liked the look of. This one, we start at the beginning and it comes from Silky Picks and I crop it. Now this is an interesting thing with cropping here on the estuary. Um, this you would think would be horizontal but in fact it isn't. Because of the shape of the far coast um, this can actually be at an angle and there's sometimes a conflict between getting uprights upright and getting horizontal things you th your eye think should be horizontal to be horizontal or to try and get some balance between the two. I believe, this is quite a difficult thing I find to get upright, but I believe that pole in the middle is upright and that's the one that I use uh, to try and get upright. As you'll see, I kept coming back to that and having another go at it to try and get it right. So there's another bit of a rotation. I then, I then, uh, ah right, that's the brush. I then, Pulled the exposure up a bit, increased the saturation, turned the saturation down again, turned the vibrance up instead, had another go at the crop, and added a brush stroke here. So just in this area at the top of the lighthouse. And what I did there was to bring the exposure up. And I think I then extended that area. I, I went in close and went down here. And this thing was looking a bit bright. And so I just dabbed that a bit. Um, although I see that I pulled the exposure up. So obviously that isn't what I did. Um, 
there I've turned the exposure up even more and now I it says have added another brush stroke but I can't see where it is and oh that was an adjustment up here on the uh, lighthouse although what it was I can't oh this is I know what happened this is um, you can turn the effect on and off to see um, how it works so here it is I've turned it off and it's gone darker I've turned it on again it's gone lighter and by going backwards and forwards between those and that's using a little thing down here a switch that c you can turn on and off you can have a look at um, the difference that your adjustments are making then Ah, that one went bright. I added, if we have a look, yes, I added this area here to um, and did, made the same adjustments to it as uh, this. This thing is called a pin up here, and the pin is associated with the particular area that you've chosen. And in this case, that pin relates to this area on up here at the top of the lighthouse, that pole and that thing there, I think, and also this here. As we'll see a bit later, I split those up because I didn't want to do the same thing to this as to that. So then, um, oh yes, I added another area over here where I increased the exposure just a little and then I extended that area and I don't know what I did. Oh, I, no, I don't know what I did at that point. That might have been a change to this area. Um, anyway, I was I was playing with these areas and making I've made this one bigger now and changing how much the effect is uh, on those localized areas. Now I've gone back to the whole image and applied some sharpening. There it is up a little bit from the default of 25 and I've put a mask on the sharpening so that's now what's being sharpened and I exported it as a JPEG then I came back later and decided it's too cold so I warmed it up by moving the temperature up towards the yellow decided that was too much, brought it down just a little bit and exported it again. I then, um, going back to the brush, oh yes, I split these two areas because I decided I didn't want to do the same amount to each of those areas. And basically I did a load of changes to the one and the other. That's what all that lot's about. I then cropped it. Now this very peculiar crop is just to bring a bottom edge up so that I can, if I go back, I'm trying to get this line horizontal. And so I bring the bottom of the image up so that it's, uh, so it's around where that line is. And I can then rotate it um, and try and get it horizontal. At which point, of course, I can decide that you know, perhaps that isn't vertical after all. Uh, and, um, oh, what did I do then? I Oh, I um, cropped it differently. Oh, that's right, because I was thinking that this bit here um, seems to be a bit too much on the bottom, so I, I took some off there. And I exported it again. Then I had another go at the angle that it's at and cropped it again and cropped it again and exported it again as a JPEG. And then I decided that the temperature was... Oh, I turned the temperature right up. Then I turned it back down again. Um, it's still been increased. Um, and I did a very tiny rotation to it, another very tiny rotation to it, and finally decided that was that. I didn't come back to it and have, have another go at it. Again, we can see the piecemeal approach to it, um, trying things out, seeing what works, trying something, pulling it back, trying different combinations of things. 
And finally, this one. This is how it came in from Silky Pix. Oh, and it's got a synchronized settings here. What's happened here is that it's um, I'd obviously made changes to another image, and I just copied them across onto this one. Um, sometimes that works okay, sometimes it doesn't. So we can see the whites and the blacks have been changed um, and the clarity and the saturation have been increased. Then I increased the exposure. I reduced the blacks so that the darker area becomes darker. And, oh, here's another one of these things where I pulled the crop up uh, a long way to get it near the line that I was looking for. Then I did the rotation and put the crop back and put it back some more. Trying to decide now how much of the bottom I want to see. I then pulled the highlights right down. Of course there isn't much by way of highlights here but I pulled it right down and then put it back again. Uh, the whites, the very bright area I pulled that up quite a long way and I pushed the blacks down. I've now increased the contrast in the image and I increased the clarity by an enormous amount. Um, and um, uh, with most normal images, if you do that, I mean, it looks absolutely ridiculous. And some people would argue that this does look absolutely ridiculous. It's certainly not much like it looked on the day. But I've never said that I'm trying to produce a record of what's happening. I've always said that what I'm trying to produce is, is pretty pictures and by pretty pictures I mean ones that I like the look of. Uh, so I sent it out as a JPEG. Then I tried applying some more noise reduction to it. I'd obviously had a look at it and thought well this really is pretty noisy. Um, and I think what happened at that point, I may have got that the wrong way around, that um, Yes, I applied some noise reduction here and also did something to the whites at that point. I oh, brought them down very slightly and exported it again. And this is actually the final state of the image, but I had another go. I reduced, oh, I know, in here, this one, there is um, noise reduction, luminance noise reduction, and that's in the final version. I then looked at that and thought, oh, it looks a bit sort of smooth and there's not much detail in it. Maybe I'll take the noise reduction off and have a go at it. And I took the noise reduction off and tried sh um, altering the sharpening. I turned the sharpening down and then turned it back up again and then tried um, a much bigger radius for the sharpening so that it's sharpening bigger features rather than all the tiny little bits of noise around the place. And I tried altering the... Uh, masking uh, a couple of times but eventually thought oh look this is ridiculous it's, it's not working uh, and so I just kept uh, the one that was here so there we are three images processed to taste well to my taste anyway from this to that just go back again not a lot of difference, perhaps. Apart from in the highlighted area. That's quite different. And from this to that. Some overall changes and some local changes. And finally, from this to that. Now I'm not saying that that's realistic. This is probably more realistic. But I liked the look of that when it was processed. I'm sure some people, perhaps a lot of people, will regard that as completely over the top. Um, which, in a sense, it is. But... Um, Anyway, I showed how I got from there to there, and even if you don't like the um, what I actually <laughs> ended up with, 
Um, hopefully you've got a, um, a little insight into the way at least that I go about these things. So that's all for now. Goodbye.